Hello, it's good to be talking with you again. Uh, we're going to revisit some business analytics techniques. Back in RP1, I gave you a 3,000 feet view of some statistical concepts using baseball as an example. In fact, I overwhelmed many of you with too much uh, too fast. But now we're going to slow down and, and look at some things at a more measured pace. Business analytics is evidence-based decision making. One of the things that it does is to use data to find associations between things. For example, Amazon can tell you that people who bought the book that you just bought also bought this other book. And they use something called the correlation coefficient to measure that kind of relationship. The correlation coefficient is the subject matter of this session. And we will work with an example which all of you can relate to. It's the price of a house. Here are the tools that we will introduce. The first is the scatter plot or scatter diagram, which gives us a picture of the relationship between the variable that we are predicting and the new variable that we might want to use to improve our prediction. Visualization should always be the starting point for data analysis. If we do a scatter plot, and see a linear relationship between two variables, then we will want to quantify the strength of that relationship, and we will want to quantify the direction of that relationship. By direction, I mean as one variable increases, does the other one increase or decrease? The correlation coefficient tells us both the strength and the direction of the relationship. Finally, the square of the correlation coefficient, or r squared, tells us exactly how much this new variable will improve our prediction. Here is the example we will be using. Uh, here we see the histogram of the selling prices of houses in a particular community in Seattle. One number that I want you to remember is the standard deviation of 98,000 $979, and the square of that number, whatever it is, keep that in mind too because that is also the variance. The, that number will give us the baseline of our prediction, and we'll use that to judge how much we improve our prediction when we add other information. Suppose we had to predict uh, the selling price of a house that had not yet sold in that community. Uh, the starting point, if we didn't have any other information, could be just to use the overall average as the predictor. Here's one property of the average that we haven't talked about yet. If we had to predict for all of the houses in our sample what its price would be, and we could only use one number, the average is the one number that would minimize the variance of the prediction error. Would, that would also mean that it would minimize the standard deviation of the prediction error. So what this means is that there is no other single predictor that would give us a variance smaller than the variance that we computed for the sample of houses that we have. What we are going to do is bring in another variable, the square foot of the house. If you were to ask me what I would predict to be the selling price of a house in this community, the first thing I would probably say is, well, tell me how big the house is. How, what, what is the square foot? So here we see a scatter plot or a scatter diagram. Each point represents a house that has been sold. The horizontal or the x-axis is the square feet of the house, and the vertical or y-axis is the price at which it sold. First, by looking at the scatter plot, I can see something that the histogram has already told me. The range of uncertainty in the selling price of the house, if I don't know the square feet, that range of uncertainty is from less than $100,000 to up to about $900,000. Next, suppose you were to ask me to predict the price of a house and you know that the house is 3,000 square feet. 
I would be able to guess that it's somewhere between $250,000 and $650,000. That's what the scatter plot is showing me. So for any particular square feet number, I have a much smaller range of variation than I do when I have to consider the whole population of houses. The other thing that the scatter plot is showing me is that the relationship between square feet and selling price is linear. In other words, a straight line fits the general pattern. That means as square foot increases, the price tends to increase proportionally. Here's what we're going to quantify using the correlation coefficient. We know that if we use the overall average as a single predictor, we get a certain variance in our prediction error. We could instead change our predictions based on the square feet. We would do that using a straight line like this one. So if I know the square feet is, say, 3,000, I would read off this straight line and get a prediction of maybe $400,000. We're going to focus on quantifying how much our predictions would improve if we had that straight line. Now this session is not going to talk about how we get that straight line. The technique for doing that is called regression and we will study it later. Now let's see if we can be more clear in defining our observation in quantitative terms. If I didn't know this square foot, the variance of the prediction error is about 99,000 squared. What fraction of that variance of the prediction error can I eliminate if I know the square feet? Could I eliminate half of it, a third of it, two-thirds of it, or whatever I want? to define my answer in those terms. We can use our data to compute in Excel something called the correlation coefficient. If we square that, it answers the question that I just posed. The correlation coefficient squared tells us the percent of variation that is explained by the relationship between square feet and selling price. And if you were screening a whole bunch of different variables, you would want to know which ones cause the price to increase and which ones cause the price to decrease. For example, square feet would obviously, you would expect to cause the price to increase, but uh, the age of the house would probably have a negative relationship and the sign on our correlation coefficient will indicate which of those is the case. So you can think of uh, correlation coefficients. For example, the age of the house I just mentioned uh, would have a negative sign. The distance from downtown might also have a negative sign. In other words, the farther you are away from downtown, the, the uh, smaller the price of the house would be. Okay, let's suppose uh, I have two columns of data and each row represents a different house and it's got for that house the square foot, square feet rather, and the selling price. There are routines that we can call in Excel that will compute something called the correlation coefficient. For this particular set of data, the correlation coefficient is 0.82. Uh, remember that number because we'll be using it as we walk through the example. Remember that it's positive, and then that basically indicates that as square feet increases, the price of the house will increase. So we just found that the correlation coefficient is 0.82 and what we're going to do is to explore what that means. First of all, that would indicate a fairly strong correlation. There's a fairly strong relationship between square feet and selling price. The uh, fact that it's positive means what we said earlier, that as one variable increases, the other variable also increases. The correlation coefficient can range between minus 1 and 
plus one. Those two extremes represent the very strongest correlation that you could have. In fact, a correlation coefficient of one or minus one tells us that if we were to do the scatter plot, the points would lie on a perfectly straight line with no variation around that line. And a R value of zero or near zero indicates that there is no linear relationship between the two variables. You would picture this as having a scatter plot that looked pretty much like a shotgun blast. There was no discernible pattern between the two variables. And finally, uh, usually when we're thinking about relationship between variables, we're thinking of one variable as being the input or x and the other variable as being the output y. But we can switch those and compute the correlation coefficient and we'll get exactly the same numbers. So it's a symmetric kind of thing. So we could have computed the correlation coefficient between square feet and selling price or between selling price and square feet. It would not matter in terms of the answer that we would get. Here are six examples that you can look at and, and get a little more of an intuitive feel for different types of correlation. The ones on the left show examples of positive correlation ranging from strong to none. And the ones on the right show examples of negative correlation uh, ranging from strong down to weak. When we talk about how much variation or how much our prediction is improved by knowing square feet, we have to talk in terms of variance. That makes things come out uh, easier from a mathematical standpoint. So you remember, and we also talk about R squared rather than R. You remember that R was 0.82, so we square it and we get 0.67, roughly two thirds. That is the fraction of the variance explained by square feet. In other words, if I have a certain variance when I have to predict without knowing square feet, and I have another variance that I get when I predict knowing square feet, I eliminate about two-thirds of that original variance. Another way to look at it is that if I eliminate two-thirds of the variance by knowing square feet, the new variance will be about one-third of the original. So what you need to remember is that R squared tells you the fraction of the variance that you explained and one minus R squared tells you the fraction of the variance that is left. And so I've left a whole bunch of arithmetic un undone here. We could go ahead and compute the variance and we could take the square root of that and get a standard deviation. And we could compare the standard deviation that we had originally with the new standard deviation and that would tell you the relationship between the uh, spread of the the before and after errors. But you don't need practice doing that right now because Excel will do it for you and we're going to talk more about it later. What I want to convey to you here I will summarize on the next slide. So here are some things you want to remember. The scatter plot or the scatter diagram is a visual representation of the relationship between two variables. And then you can compute the correlation coefficient that tells you the direction and the strength of that relationship. In other words, what you see on the scatter diagram can be quantified using the correlation coefficient. And then to refine it even further, the R squared tells you the fraction of the variance explained by the relationship. And then one minus R squared is the fraction of the variance that you would have left once you use that relationship for making predictions. Uh, this is a 
quick overview of correlation coefficients. Uh, there will be another session where we'll revisit this and uh, build your understanding a little deeper. Um, but uh, congratulations, you've uh, absorbed quite a bit at this point.